Hey, what's going on everyone? Travis here and welcome to another tutorial using Sketch and Principle. Let's jump right in. So we're gonna be creating this movie app thing. <laughs> this is pretty cool. So what you can do is you can scroll through and this is kind of like a paging system that we'll go over in principle. Um, you can look at these different movies and then when you see one you like, you tap and one of the coolest animations is where this cover morphs into sort of a cover photo. So watch when we click on it, it kind of goes up there. And we've also got some other animations. It, it transitions from action movies to Jurassic Park. And we also have this arrow and this menu icon moving. Um, we've got the play icon fading in. And uh, we're even going to uh, go over how to actually make the trailer play in principle. So check this out. We click on it. You know, it's got the title, the cast or whatnot. Watch, we can hit play. It's actually going to play the, the trailer. I'm really proud of you for going on this trip. You're going to have so much fun. And remember, if something chases you. It's not funny. If something chases you, run. Didn't she see the original Jurassic Park movies where people pe people died, guys? It's not, it's not funny. She doesn't get it. It's all right. We're going to. We're going to do the design anyway. So um, let's close this out and let's close out the, actually, let's just drag this principal document over uh, out of the way just for reference. Um, so here's the sketch file. Now, um, I don't want to go over the actual sketch UI in this video. I really want to focus about principal and how to get these animations working. Um, for those of you that are pretty, you know, comfortable with sketch or just UI design in general, this is a pretty basic design. Um, you know, the only few like kind of unique things are these blurred backgrounds, which are essentially just the covers, you know, scaled up and then uh, Gaussian blur was applied to them like so. Um, and what I've done is I've exported these background images as separate uh, JPEGs and we're going to be importing those into principle um, as, as different files because these, um, uh, you, you'll see why in, in just a second. So this is these are all just you know text layers and and uh, and text layers uh, shape layers and things like that pretty pretty simple stuff this is just a mask right now with a rectangle but you'll see here in a second to get that like morphing effect going from here to here um, we need to do a little bit of magic inside principle but um, it's easy magic don't worry so to get things started what we want to do is we want to import this sketch file into principle. Now, I don't want these background images to come in as well. So we're going to delete these out. We'll delete this one as well. So now we've got kind of blank backgrounds and, and that's how I want to start things. So with this file ready to rock, we head over to principle. We're going to do, um, f uh, let's see, I'm going to do file new. So this is a new one. We're going to go zoom so we can see everything. Here's our preview window so we can see how things are looking. And uh, we're going to click on this sketch import button and we're going to import that at uh, at 2x. And you can see it says sketch file is movie underscore INI. INI is initial. So I just did that because it was the initial design. So we'll hit import and there we go. So we're looking pretty good. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and and we want to combine sort of these three cards, these three movies, into one group, all a part of this first artboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to select each of these layers. The text is there and the title, and we're going to have all of them selected and then hit Command G. That's going to make them into a group. We'll name this group Deadpool. And we'll do the same thing with the Jurassic World card, the movie here. We're going to group that name it Jurassic World. I can type. All right. So at this point, I'm going to do a uh, command X and I'm going to just going to right click and say delete artboard. I'm going to paste, I'm going to drag it into this artboard and now it's a part of this one. I'm going to kind of drag it over and you can see it's cool. It kind of pushes these out of the way. It's like get out of my way. Deadpool is here. So I'm going to cut, cut that one as well, delete the artboard, same thing, paste it in. It's now a part of this one, and same thing. It's like, get out of here, Velociraptors. I'm Chris Pratt, and I'm on a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I you can't beat the original Jurassic Park, but it, Jurassic World at least was nowhere near as bad as the Jurassic Park 2 and 3. I mean, so we got to give it that, right? So... 
cool. So now we have these three. It's called uh, uh, Mad Max. Actually, we're going to also group this one on the original artboard. We'll group that and we'll name it uh, Mad Max Mad. No, Mad Max. Now, we've got all three of these cards, and you can see it's all a part of this iPhone 7 Copy 2 artboard. Let's name that um, uh, Movies. And that's just because in Sketch I didn't name these artboards because I'm a noob and I and I was I was lazy. But uh, cool. So we've got that. We're now going to – let's just do a little cleanup. We'll, we'll move the search out of the way. We're going to select these three groups. Okay? Let's move the menu at the top. We're going to select these three groups. And we're going to group those into one group. So with those three selected, Command-G again. And we're going to name this Movie Cards. Now, if we look at the preview, this is all we have right now. We can't do anything with it, but you can see there's, a, there's another movie here, which is good. That kind of lets the user know that, hey, there's something over here. You can kind of scroll over. But I can't scroll. Why not? Well, here's where the fun starts to happen. So with this group selected... We are going to change the group's static horizontal. We're going to change it to page, but for now, I just want to show you guys. We're going to change it to scroll first and check this out. So now we can kind of just scroll around. Now, without moving the bounding box, you can like start to scroll, but then it just like comes back. So to change that, we're actually going to drag the bounding box of this group over to the edge of the artboard. Now, we can scroll all the way through like that. So that's pretty cool. We can kind of just like flick around. Now, um, I said flick around, you dirty people. So this is not what we want. Obviously, we don't want someone to stop in the middle of the movies. We want it to be more of a paging effect where once they kind of slide to about right here and let go, it should kind of like snap over to like this movie. And same thing with the, the final one. So. With that group selected, again, we're actually going to change it. Instead of scroll, we're going to do page. Now, if we look back at the preview and we let go, see how it kind of snaps. But the problem is, is it's not snapping with Deadpool centered. And then if we go all the way over, it's definitely not centered. So what we need to do is we need to highlight that bounding box again for that group. And we're going to bring it in. Let's bring it into about right there. It's kind of centered on the card. Um, it's hard to get these things perfect. I've yet to find like a perfect solution, but let's see. That's pretty good. It's about even. I mean, it's about as good as I'm probably going to be able to get it, but perhaps if I drag it over. Oh, no, don't do that. If I drag over the group just a teeny bit more, let's see if that helps. No, it probably needs to go the other direction. Give it just a little bit more space. That's actually looking really good. That's almost perfect. And what I'm looking at is how much of this left card and this right card, this, these movie uh, posters are showing. So that's looking good. Now, obviously, uh, we need to get the backgrounds in now. Um, and we're going to go to the finder here. And here are some assets. We're going to check, uh, where is it? Mad Max Blur. We're going to drag that right in. It's a ginormous photo. We're gonna center it up and scale it way down. There we go. And of course, we're gonna drag that to the bottom. Cool. Now, if you look at the preview, it's looking good. Now, at this point, how do we get the background blur to change? You know, once once the user scrolls over to the Deadpool movie, how do we get the Deadpool blur background to show? You know, as they scroll, and of course, the Jurassic World one as well. So this is where I'm going to introduce uh, something called drivers in principle. In fact, let's save before it's too late and my computer like crashes or something like that. We'll name it movie, uh, movie uh, underscore app principle. So drivers inside of principle, I'm going to click on it and it says select a layer to drive. So we're going to select the group, right? Here's the movie cards. The way that drivers work is it looks like a timeline. And if I click and drag this, it sort of looks like it's a timeline, right? Um, you know, how long does it take, you know, to, before it gets here? So what this is actually doing is you're actually dragging the uh, the scroll X. Uh, so right here, you see it says movie cards, scroll X. When you have an element that has some kind of uh, scrolling or paging or other sort of like actions like that, you will get drivers um, available to you. 
so if I select this, you say it, you know, the scroll X uh, is there as well. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to come back over and we're going to go ahead and drag in the Deadpool uh, blur, the background for that. And we'll center that up, scale it down, and we'll drag it all the way to the bottom. And we'll go ahead and do the last one as well, the, the blur for Jurassic World. Drag that down. It looks pretty good blurred, doesn't it? It kind of looks like a nice bokeh background. So we'll scale that down, drag it all the way down to the bottom. All right, cool. So if we zoom back in, what we want to do is we want to scroll over until Deadpool is centered. And it looks like it's around 300. Now, at this point, we want to go ahead and add, you see how we have Mad Max Blur layer selected, and it's the Movie Cards Scroll X for the driver. So we're gonna add, with Mad Max Blur selected, we're gonna add a keyframe for opacity. And with that keyframe, we're gonna change the opacity down to zero. Now I do need to go back to zero on the actual driver and bump the opacity of Mad Max to 100. So there we go. So now we're going from zero, or I'm sorry, 100 opacity on the Mad Max blur to zero opacity, which reveals the Deadpool blur layer below it. And if we check that out in the preview, it's pretty awesome. Now you can do this with colors or other things. And drivers, uh, this is just the beginning of drivers, guys. Like this is a very basic thing with drivers. I mean, you can do all things like, as I drag to the left, I want the rating to like float upwards or something like that. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can see here in the keyframes, you know, you've got X, Y, width, height, scale, angle, radius, stroke width, opacity, shadow X, shadow Y even, which is cool when you want to like, if you want to uh, kind of simulate something being picked up, you can actually like increase the shadow, shadow blur, um, really powerful stuff. Um, be careful with it. It's, it's dangerous magic. You gotta, you gotta be careful with that stuff. So now we are at 300 and now at this point, let's add a keyframe of opacity to the Deadpool layer and we'll drag it over to Jurassic World, which is about 600. And as you guessed, we're gonna drag the opacity of that one to zero. And we are looking good. Now every, all the backgrounds change based on uh, which movie you have scrolled to. Very cool. Now drivers are also live, so as you drag, you can actually see what it looks like, like so. So cool. We will now animate the screen, uh, uh, the transition, I should say, should say, of what happens when someone clicks on this, you know, and it goes over to this side. Now, real quick on this layer, I do need to go ahead and add in that background layer. So we'll actually just copy this, uh, the blur for Jurassic World, paste it, and it's going to paste in place. We'll go ahead and drag that to the bottom as well. Come on, go to the bottom. There we go. Cool. Now for, we can close drivers. We're, we're pretty much done with drivers, I think. Yeah, I think we're done with drivers for this tutorial. Now what we wanna do is we wanna, you know, select this entire group if we want. We can double click as well and it's like if they just click on the on the cover or if there was a button specifically that says like view movie, you know, we would, we would we would link it for there uh, from there, but we'll just say when they tap on this this whole this whole thing, um, we want the tap to drag to this screen, and then we also want the tap for the back to go back. But I want to make the hotspot for that back button to be bigger. So with this artboard selected, let's add a rectangle. Let's make the rectangle pretty big. So that's our like tappable area. We'll drag it right above the arrow and we're gonna say when they tap on this go back okay so that's good to go now obviously we don't want a giant gray box um, you can't turn the opacity of this down to zero because the opacity when it's at zero it essentially makes the tappable action you know interaction it's it's gone zero opacity means like you know you actually deleted it so instead of you know changing the actual opacity you're gonna click on the fill information and change the alpha opacity to zero so now you can see the opacity of this rectangle is still 100, but the fill is 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 gone. So let's look at um, let's look at this. So we can scroll through, and when they click, it goes there. Now here's the weird thing. You see how there's there's two. I think there's about two weird things happening. 
So when I click, you see this image, the Deadpool image is like morphing into this guy. <laughs> what happens is, you see how this is called bitmap? Well, I bet you this, this layer is also called bitmap, yes. Now watch, if I just rename this like Deadpool cover and then go back over to the, uh, to the preview window, it's no longer doing it. So the way that um, principle works is it will animate layers that have the same name. You know, when you go from one transition to another, it'll automatically animate them with keyframes. It looks like the other thing that's happening, which is kind of funny, is the very, very top line of our menu is probably the same layer name as the play icon, the triangle. So <laughs> obviously we need to go in here. Um, it looks like it's called fill one, which makes sense, right? So we need to change that to like menu icon, you know. Um, and this is something that th these layer names are all uh, derived from your sketch file. So if you know you're going to be animating something pretty uh, in, in detail like that in principle, it's a good thing to go ahead and layer your, uh, name your layers uh, pretty specifically. But now it looks like we don't have any issues. But obviously, it's just going straight to that screen. There's no animation in between the two. We've got the scroll stuff done, but this is kind of basic. You know, we want something to look a lot cooler, right? So... The first thing we're going to focus on is the menu icon transitioning to the back icon. So to do that, we can select this menu group, right? We're going to make a copy of it. We're going to come over to this artboard and hit paste. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it over to the left right around there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the fill two, which is really the arrow icon. Let's actually name it arrow icon just for uh, organization's sake. And we're going to copy the arrow icon come over to this layer, hit paste, move it over to the right. It looks like we need to move it up a layer above the title bar. And we're going to turn it, its opacity to zero. So now what's going to happen is when, when the user clicks on this screen and it transitions over here, the arrow is going to be animated into place where it originally starts over here. So it's going to actually animate to the left and it's going to, it's going to fade in while the menu icon is going to move over to the left because it's on the left on this artboard. And because they have the same layer name or the same group name, I should say, it will automatically animate. So check this out. See that at the top left, the, the menu and the arrow just kind of animates over really, really cool. I love how simple that is. Now, the next thing is we'll just do the animation between action movies and Jurassic Park for the title. So for that one, let's say when they click on action movies, it goes up and the opacity changes to zero for Jurassic Park. It's going to start down because we want it to animate up when they get to the screen and we'll turn its opacity to zero. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty cool. Obviously, we can fine tune this. So that looks good. Now, the, 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 the hard part, the magic I was telling you guys about earlier, how do we get this cover, this, this movie poster to like fade into, kind of morph into this cover instead of just jumping right into it like that? So the way this is going to work is we actually are going to um, double click inside, what is this called? Cover 2, and this is called just cover. Now watch, if I name this cover 2, it's going to work, but it's going to look bad. Actually, hang on. Is this still called? Co oh, it's cover space two. That's why. Um, okay. So that stretching effect is not great. I mean, it's it works, I guess, but but it really doesn't have the effect we're going for. It just looks like it's kind of just being stretched all around, and you know, poor Chris Pratt. It's like getting all you know, woozy and stuff. I'm getting woozy just looking at that. I can't do it. So we don't want that, right? So the way we need to do this in principle is we need to make a mask, a custom mask, essentially. So we're going to double click this cover two, and we're going to uh, command. Um, let's see, let me think. Okay, actually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have that selected. And we're going to do a rectangle. And we're going to go ahead and drag it just over the cover two, then we're going to select both of them. This is really weird because it's like a group inside a group inside a group, but just, just follow along. So we've got layer, right? We're going to rename layer, uh, let's say, uh, uh, cover mask, okay? We're going to select the, those two. So we've got the cover itself, right? And the cover mask selected, and we're going to group those. Now we're going to clip, or I'm sorry, not clip. Um, I think we need to rearrange these. 
or no, I, I'm so sorry, guys. All you have to do is is make a group. Let me let me let me let me step back. I, I'm kind of new to this. <laughs> All you have to do is select the layer, okay, just the layer itself, the one with the cover, and you're gonna do Command G, make a group. All right, and if we turn on clip sub layers, check that on, check it out. Now it's essentially like a mask, right? We can we can change the groups bounding box just like we did with the movie cards themselves. And if we check uh, clip sub layers, it, it acts as a mask. Now, instead of cover to group, let's name this um, uh, cover photo JW for Jurassic World. We're gonna copy that, paste it to this artboard and we're gonna align it. We're gonna get rid of this one. We don't want cover two anymore. We don't want it. And we're gonna drag it up and let's go ahead and rearrange this down below the title bar. There we go. Now, check this out. We can drag this up, drag this off to the side for this mask. Then we can double click inside and rescale the photo and position it where we want. So if we like that, that looks good. Let's see what happens. It's working pretty good, but I think what's happening is if I, the mask is trying to go off the screen and it's not sure what to do with it. So let's actually line it up like that. Oh, I see what's happening. I think, um, I think what's happening is, let's see, let me see if this works. It's because it's slightly, um, is this my movie cards cover? I, I moved it off to the right a little bit and I shouldn't have done that. We actually just want to just centered, scale up like that. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that was my bad. I, I I moved it to the left and the right, and you guys can see, like, watch. If you actually, if you, like, move it, you know, instead of scaling from the center like that, and then you move it over to the right like that, you're going to get some sort of weird masking issues like so. But if you keep it nice and centered, you should get a perfect effect. So that is awesome. Now, one other thing we want to do is we want the, the title information to slide up from the bottom. So to do that, here's what we want to do. Actually, let's make, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's select all of this. So we just have this and we're going to group it. Let's just name it uh, movie info, copy it, paste it on this screen and drag, oops, no, drag it down. No, the whole group. There we go. So we'll drag that down. Let's see how that looks. It looks pretty good. Comes up from the from the top there. Um, I want the rating. You see how the rating, the 7.9, just kind of disappears immediately. It just kind of disappears. It's gone. Let's have that rotate off to the right of the side uh, of the screen. So we're gonna select those two. Come over to the screen, paste them, move them to the right. I love how easy this is. And then we can change the angle maybe, kind of like rolls off. Let's see how that looks. Cool. See how it kind of just rolls off to the side now. I think, I hope uh, when you guys watch, especially if this is the first time you've been checking out uh, Principal, I hope you can see it's it's really easy to animate some some awesome stuff. And it's such a big difference, you know. Um, I'm a huge fan of After Effects. I'll, I'll always use After Effects for certain stuff, but um, it would take a long time to do something like this in After Effects. And you're, it's not actually interactive. It's just a movie, right? With this, you can actually, you can play with it. You know, there's even a principal uh, app that you can download and you can save these interactions to your phone and actually do the, the gestures to, to do these things. It is super cool. Um, so one other thing, we want the PG-13 and the play icon. Those are both just popping right in. You can see them popping right in right when you click. We want to go ahead and do a similar thing. We'll just copy the play icon over, drag it down maybe, and turn the opacity. So that should make it fade in and up. That looks good. And for the PG-13, let's copy that, paste it over here, and we'll just kind of... It should, it should slide up with the other elements, which are down here. 
So we'll just kind of put it right around there and then it should just kind of slide up. Yep, with everything else. All right, so the final thing, guys, is just actually making the trailer work. You know, when they actually click the play icon, I, I, wanna, I want the, 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 um, the trailer to play. So principal will actually accept movie files. <laughs> if it wasn't cool enough, like, yes, principal actually will accept movie files as well. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to experiment with the, um, what is it, the, uh, the touch down and the touch up. So with the play icon selected, we're gonna click the lightning bolt. We're gonna say, uh, let's see, uh, with touch down, we're gonna drag it to itself. That's gonna make a copy of the artboard. So the moment the person touches down with their finger, it's gonna go to this screen, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scale the play icon up. Now, on touch up, meaning they let go of the actual touch, we're going to make another copy and this time we're going to actually drag in the video file. So here it is, drag it on in. There it is. Go ahead and put it in place. So I'm thinking pretty much just replacing, you know, where this cover area was, the, the photo. It's going to go right there. Let's go ahead and, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's okay if we don't do like a fade. Let's see. Let's say when they touch the video again, when they tap on it, it goes back here to the original title screen. Let's just take a look at how all that works. So now it should be, it's playing. I have my, my volume muted. So it's going to play here in just a second. There we go. And then you tap and it goes back. Check it out. So if I touch and I hold, play icon kind of zooms in. And you can actually see, if you look at this green indicator, it actually tells you what screen you're on. So right now we're on this screen. Now watch when I tap down, this screen will be highlighted. This is where the play icon uh, scales up. So watch, I'm going to hold. Then I'm going to let go and it's going to move over to the far right one with the video. Bam. And it is playing at this point. It just has a long, you know, this following preview has been approved for all audiences. So I click again, goes back, go back to the video, and that is it, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have a ton of fun creating these. Um, I will be creating more. Um, let me know down below in the comments uh, what kind of stuff you guys would like to see on this channel. Um, and of course, uh, in the description as well, down below, you can download this principle and sketch file uh, to just kind of, you know, break it down, see how it was made. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great, have a great rest of your day.